Welcome to the What's Your Weird Story podcast. Everyone has at least one good story. And some of us have stories that are just to the left of normal. We're interested in the ones that push the boundaries of what we can perceive. Stories that defy explanations. Stories with an air of mystery. Stories we might not share. For fear of being thought of differently. But don't worry. We're all friends here. So, what's What's your your weird story? story? Hello, Weirdsville. Welcome to the What's Your Weird Story podcast. How is everyone? Hope you're doing well. My name is Barry Johnston. I'm your I'm your host. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so easy, is it, Barry? I'd like to say that first before I introduce <laughs> you. Joining me today is my co-host, Mr. Adam Beebe. How are you, sir? I'm I'm doing all right. I'm very tickled there with your uh, your tongue your the, tongue the, the gymnastics. Yeah, you got. It's usually me who gets <laughs> tongue tied there, but uh, you you stumbled and fumbled a little bit, and so now I feel a little bit vindicated. All right. Well, good. Uh, good. In the world, so good. Speaking of tumbling and fumbling, man, I got an old man uh, moment here. I uh, oh yeah. I had a knee injection, you know, like last week. I had some steroids injected in my knee because my knee's all jacked up. Mm-hmm. And it 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 messed me up, man. Like, I didn't think any side effects would happen, but like, man, the next day I I, w- I wasn't feeling right, and uh, mm-hmm. I think it was a perfect storm. I didn't eat in the morning, and then I went to uh, yeah, I went to go work, and I was working in the brewery, man, and uh, my stomach was just churning and churning, and I got hit with these hiccups, dude. <laughs> I got hit with a fit of hiccups, man, for like 20 minutes. I couldn't get rid of them. So I'm like, well, maybe I need to get something to eat. So I go and I, I grab something to eat real quick, and that didn't work. And, uh, man, I freaking puked everywhere, man. I puked Dude. my freaking brains out, man. So it, it it really jacked me up. The knee feels great, but it <laughs> it rocked me, man. That first day, it was not good, man. So... I have to do physical therapy because the the insurance I got sucks. And so the doctor said, man, you know what we need to do is you need to do at least one round of of therapy. And then because then we can show the insurance that we're doing all we can do. And then if the if the uh, injection doesn't take, we can do a different type of injection and hopefully they'll approve that. So I did that. Knee feels feels really good, man. I He told me my year. My uh, knee is 20 years older than I am. Damn, dude. Yeah. Well, I guess that makes sense because, um, I mean, you you played you were at, people out there who may not know this, uh, Mister uh, Cool, laid back uh, Christian Slater sounding uh, here. <laughs> um, he was the he was of our high school. Barry was one of the Golden Boy star athletes, um, well, homecoming I, king football players. Yeah, I played um, football. I played but, football. When you were about, what was it? Probably our sophomore year. It was our freshman. We, yeah, our freshman, freshman year. Yeah, freshman man. year. Yeah, I blew, um, I blew the knee out, mm-hmm. and I didn't totally blow it out. I didn't uh, damage ligaments or anything, but mm-hmm. cartilage tear. It was a cartilage tear, and they went in there and they scoped it. I was talking to the lady t- today because I was in ther- physical therapy, and she's like, "Well, you know, anymore they usually don't repair those because anytime you go in to the knee and and do surgery." It's automatic arthritis and all kinds of problems, you know? So I'm like, dang, man, I wish I'd have known that then. But, yeah, it was wild. So something I've lived with for 30 years. Can you believe that? 30 years I've lived with this, man. It's not debilitating, but it just it's it's an aggravant. It's just irritating. So. Yeah, well, you know, uh, the older you get, um, one of your hobbies is collecting all these weird little body pains that you always hear your parents and and older siblings and people. You always hear people talk about that, but man, it's true. Yes, it is. So, you know, so it sounds like this is, uh, you know, uh, another, uh, you're listening to another episode of Middle-Aged White Guys Complained. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's it's crazy because I think when I was a kid, I never, when I looked at old people being slow, it used to piss me off, Mm -hmm. you know, because I was in, I was, I was in a hurry, you know, I had places to be. Yeah, Yeah. But now I get it. 
I get it. You know, older folks are slow because they're in pain, guys. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're yeah. dealing with a skeletal structure that is not of their youth. And so I have a new respect for my elderly folks out there. <laughs> it's so funny, too, though, that you're um, only uh, a few months older than me and yet you're so much so many years older than i know me. you you stayed I'm, 16 or 18 so i'm well you know i'm still i i, I also i'm in my late 20s you know i mean i've looked basically <laughs> the same you were old enough to drink over a decade so right, you know right <laughs> uh, close to two decades now i guess so you know i mean it's uh, just you know i'm not gonna say which particular spiritual force i signed a pact with to keep my uh youthful looks but uh it's uh no i've got good genetics on that kind of stuff i do you know look a little bit younger than i normally do but uh would appear i think it's all but, the, it's uh, all the chickens you sacrificed yeah well you know gotta have a hobby but uh no you know but it's like you know both my parents you know um, were very young looking for you yeah. know their ages so yeah when my dad passed away he didn't look as old as he was before he got sick but you know Anyway, um, hey, you know, speaking of something that's totally unrelated. <laughs> yes. I don't know where we're going uh, with all of this talk, but. It's okay. Uh, Nobody knows, and that's okay. But we've got today for you on the real show, uh, What's Your Weird Story? We do have a guest who's got a weird story, and it is a unique story to yeah anything else we've had before he's got a couple of stories but one in particular the main thrust of his story collection the juiciest part um is so cool and it's so different from anything else we had and i mean i tell you i love it it's it's yeah. it's awesome it's one it's been one of my favorites for yeah. sure it's definitely and, definitely uh, cool and unique yeah and so uh our guest today is robert we found Robert on uh, on Facebook, and he and I started chatting. And he's like, he's you know, told me a, a very brief description of what experiences he had, and, and I was like, oh yes, we've we've got to have you on. So we've been talking for about you know probably eight minutes now. Let's get to the story. <laughs> let's get to Robert. Robert. Yes, Robert, what's your weird story? Awesome. Do you want me to go for it? Yeah. All right, so I, I need to give you a little basic background information how I got into this position to where I encountered this thing. Um, I In my, the military, my job, well, first off, I was in from, this happened in 78. I was in from 76 to 79 in Germany. And this happened in 78. And when I got out, we were right on the cusp. I was the commo guy. And we're right on the cusp of getting encrypted radio technology. We, this okay. was before, just before they had the encrypted radio technology mm -hmm. over the air. So when we went out and we played our little war games in the field, we still used the old Korean era, Vietnam era crank telephones mm -hmm. to where once we went out to the field, it was my job to run a wire, a physical wire from the... Um, headquarters platoon to the other platoons. Okay. And that involved um, uh, taking a big reel of wire out, running it to their telephones, and it, it was it was pretty scary. I mean, there was um, some times where I just sat down in like the middle of a pine forest on a moonless night. You know, I'd wave my hand in front of my face, and I couldn't even see my hand. Wow. It was that dark. And there's wild boar out there, there's wolves, and I would hear sometimes branches cracking, like something was, you know, kind of shadowing me, but mm -hmm. it was it was scary as hell sometimes. So what I would do, I would try and get my friends to go out and walk the wire with me. It, like, it, it was freaky. Yeah, um, I can imagine. So this night... We were about 10 miles out of Kaiserslautern, which is in southern Germany. Um, you could see the town over the horizon. We we're in the middle of nowhere. There's no people out there. We we're playing war games, and 
what that is is there's actually one company against another to where they have like these armbands on and they could capture you you have some armbands on we had m16s with flash suppressors on them and blanks um and we were told not to use our flashlights because mm. that could lead to like you being captured right right so I talked one of my buddies into going out and walking the wire with me. And so we, we took off. We're walking the wire. We're stringing the wire. And I don't know how well you can see this illustration, but yeah, we came up to the middle of a big clearing. Mm -hmm. And on one side, there's a fence line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it had snowed. Um, and then it, there... It, there was about probably six inches of snow on the ground, and then it drizzled after that, so there was a very thin layer of ice on top of the snow, and then it was soft snow underneath. Um, so we get into this clearing, and on the right side is that fence line that I showed you, and we started, he noticed it first, there was something kind of shadowing walking along the fence line. Yeah. And all I could see was um, just a, a dark shape. And so we get – one more time, let me go to this. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to describe this for uh, everybody at home. Okay. Um, so hold up hold up the image so that I can give it a good um, – so you've, we've got kind of a, uh, a circular clearing. Um, and Surrounded by pine trees, thick right. pine trees. And over on one side of the circle, there's the fence, line. the fence line. Yeah, and then so you're approaching from I don't on the I don't know if it's the south, but you're approaching from one side to, and on We're the opposite on side the of where you line, are, parallel to yeah. the fence line. Mm -hmm. And this thing is walking along this direction along the fence line. Okay. And finally, it gets up here and starts coming toward us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So let me tell you what happened then. This my buddy had been. We had these M16s with the flash suppressors, and he had been packing an ice ball. Ed was big on ice balls. He had been packing an ice ball, and this thing starts approaching us across the clearing. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I don't know exactly how far away it was. I couldn't really see anything, but it wasn't walking. Um, it was floating above the snow. And this is what I saw. So Whoa. I saw, and I know this, this almost sounds like the stereotypical vampire or something. It had on what I described as a, I, I just found this today. Okay. I, I went and Googled a Victorian double cape. Yeah. Because right. it had on like a little cape. I don't even know what they call it. Like a cape yeah. with a little cape up here. Yeah, and kind of a Lincoln stovepipe hat, but only mm -hmm. half the height. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I saw no. It was just black, just charcoal gray. There was no distinguishing features. I never saw a leg movement. I never saw arm movement, and it just floated toward us across the snow, <laughs> upright. No, no leg movement. It wasn't walking. It wasn't making tracks in the snow, and it was floating toward us. And wow. completely silent. Yeah, completely like, silent because it wouldn't be no tracking. Oh my gosh! Um, and I've always been kind of into the paranormal since I was a kid. And so, Ed, we at first what we did was we kind of held our guns up, and we were like. I don't know. I, I'm not going to get too explicit with what we said, but it was, hey, and feel free to feel free. <laughs> <laughs> we got guns. Um, we thought maybe it was a German national, German local, mm -hmm. but we're 10 miles from any town. Yeah. Um, this thing didn't stop, even though you couldn't tell from a distance we had flash suppressors. Um, and it just kept coming. And finally, when it got to be about 20, 30 yards away, Ed took this ice ball that he had been packing, and he threw it, and, oh, my God, it hit this thing square, dead center in the chest. Oh my God. And you could see the ice ball just splatter. Whoa. And so uh, this thing obviously had substance. Right. Uh, it had substance because when it hit it in the chest, it splattered. I could hear it splatter. And 
at that moment, the eyes started glowing red. Oh. And it looked at Ed. <laughs> I could see the eyes glowing red, and it looked at him. And I was like, Ed, let's check this out. Let's do, we got to check this out. And he was like, I, I almost. So can I tell you what he said? Yeah, 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 yeah. free. We're, we're, so he yeah. said, "Fuck you! I'm getting out of here." <laughs> That's and what I, I would like, say. Dude, this is, yeah. this is, we need to check this out. So the next thing I hear from him is "Fuck you!" And he's already running. He's like <laughs> five feet away. So I didn't really realize what he was feeling mm. until it turned and looked at me. And when it, I could feel, when the gaze turned, it was kind of like a laser beam. And when it locked eyes with me, I've never felt that kind of terror. I almost soiled myself. It was like um, my knees, it was something, my soul. I just felt it in my soul. Yeah. This thing looked at me, and the only thing I can uh, liken it to, it was like a meat grinder going both directions it wanted to shred me i could feel what it was thinking Man. it was just thinking i'm going to shred you i'm going to decimate you is what i felt Damn. and it was just a feeling of horror and it kept coming floating toward me getting closer and at first i was frozen and i couldn't even move and i'd say it got within 20 feet and i still really couldn't see any features yeah. No movement, but I here's here was my take on it. This was not a um, it wasn't a ghost because it had solid substance. Right. I don't think I, it was human at one point, but wasn't any longer. Um, it, it was evil, definitely evil, mm -hmm. and it wanted to hurt me. I don't beyond hurt. Mm -hmm. There there was hate. There there was hate. There was evil. Yeah. Um, wow. I don't know what the intent was, but let me just say this. I was in Germany for 30 months. The tours were a little longer then. And we, the GIs, we would go up to these old castles and we'd sit in the castles and we'd party, build fires, mm -hmm. drink, and, you know, other things. And um, we never saw, like when I lived in California, we would see people up in the mountains partying and drinking beer and having fun. And I never once saw the German nationals at night up in the mountains or up in these castles. Man. They just didn't, for whatever reason, they didn't go up there. Right. I think we know the reason. <laughs> and, um, you saw the reason. Yeah. And, and there's, there are these superstitions that they have, these beliefs that they have in Germany they truly believe in Europe in vampires, werewolves, and we would come across these stone crosses. I, I don't think there was one too far from where we saw this thing. It was like a 10-foot ornate ancient stone cross, very elaborately carved in the middle of another clearing. And I kind of wondered at times, why were they there? Mm. Who would go to this trouble to make just this lone big stone cross in the middle of nowhere um so anyways i at that point i knew why my buddy took off he just abandoned me yeah he left me and i took off running and i kept looking back and it followed me for probably another 30 yards oh. but i kind of feel like the water i've heard legends that vampires or whatever they don't travel over water very well mm -hmm. and there was snow on the ground and it couldn't i'm getting like chills telling you about this um i don't think it could keep up with me because I, I was i had the fear of god in me i was running yeah finally with my buddy and the weird thing is we never discuss this again until I moved to California. He lived in California. Then we finally talked about it, um, and we both saw the same thing, this. Wow. We saw wow. it. was just black, charcoal black, coming toward us, and I kind of, let me just give you a little bit more background. 
there was at least twice while I was in Germany that we heard rumors of guys, uh, GIs, American soldiers that were out on these field maneuvers that disappeared. There was one where a guy was driving a truck. He got out to go to the side of the road. There was a little ditch. They saw his footprints go up there to the edge of the ditch, and he was just gone. The footprints didn't go any farther. He was gone. Wow. And there was other times that we heard of guys just disappearing out in the field like that. So I kind of feel the this encounter was unique. Mm. And if I had been alone, I honestly don't know if I would have made it back. Because yeah. I didn't even really see it at first. Ed did. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I was kind of wanting to stay and check it out. I might have let this thing get up close enough to me yeah, to do some harm. I, I, honest to God, I don't know what it was. That is crazy, man. So, yeah. so you're basically out there navigating by the moonlight? I mean, you it was a full moon. A full yes. moon. You, weren't, you didn't have flashlights because you couldn't mm-hmm. use them. Mm-hmm. And you see this thing coming at you. And, well, at a certain point, you see it coming at you. Right. And that just, that must be a terrifying feeling to see something like that just just hovering and, and coming at you. And you have no idea what it is. We thought, at first, I couldn't tell. It was far enough away that I couldn't tell that it was floating. But as it got closer... We could see, when we stepped down, because that little layer of ice on the snow, you could hear it crunch. Right. Yeah. And we could tell when this thing got close enough that it wasn't walking. There was no crunching. It was floating above the snow. Yeah. And so, I, honest to God, I don't know what I saw, but I, my gut hunch is it was not a demon. It was not a ghost. Yeah. It was human at one point, but wasn't any longer. Right. And it went to hurt us yeah but beyond hurt it wanted to kill us right you 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 um, said that this is a unique story and and it is because i we've never heard anything like it you know the closest things that we've heard would be like when people talk about shadow people right but it is different from that because those those things are um well they do induce the terror and everything but they're like well, they're always described as blacker than black, you know, it, but they're not solid. You know, no, they don't have that. Solid. That, yeah. Right. It was and, solid. It had substance. Right. And you can um, tell that it had, you know, fabric or whatever in substance to it. it that's did. just. That's crazy. Man. So, you know, I can't tell you what it was, but I can tell you that when I got back to the States for a number of years, and this persisted for a few years, I would have nightmares where I would uh, kind of dream about this thing following me, like kind of like you saw me, you know of me, mm-hmm. I didn't take you out, and I kind of had nightmares that this thing was going to come after me. Wow. But it never did, and I, you know, obviously it couldn't cross the Atlantic, but right. um, I can tell you this, that I know for a fact that there are things in Germany and Europe that, um, they're out there, yeah. And they, I think they. I don't know if this was an isolated incident. That there's just one, but I feel there's more. Mm-hmm. I've heard of the uh, Highgate vampire in London. Mm-hmm. Um, other incidents where people have encountered um, similar things, but I, I'll be totally honest with you. I don't feel that I would have. Walked out of there if I would have been alone. Yeah, yeah, might not yeah. be. Well, you know that pic- uh, that picture that you showed. The first thing that came to my mind was Jack the Ripper. What you would what you would think, like the old Jack the Ripper, like the silhouette of Jack the Ripper, kind of looking. Right. You know that. Yeah, that old. Sp- uh, I know this is almost too stereotypical, but this is what I saw. So crazy, and man. Today, and I went on Google today. And this, this picture was actually, it was a mannequin dressed in, it was described as Victorian Edwardian clothes. Okay. I just uh, went on, like, Photoshop and colored out the face. Uh-huh. And um, That's that wild. is what I saw. That is oh, gray. wild. Um, that is so wild. I took it that it was from another time period. Right. But 
Uh, or at least the clothes that it was wearing. It could have been yes. it could have been older itself. Well, I think that that style of clothing went even uh, the Edwardian time period was I read today was 1901 to 1910. Mm -hmm. But that style of clothes was in fashion even longer than that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just all I can tell you is that when this thing locked eyes with me, I just I, I could just sense I've never felt evil like that. Yeah. When it locked eyes with me, it was like a laser beam, and it was just, um, I just have never felt that terror in my soul. Right. It was cut right to the core of my being. Damn. I mean, it was, it was so scary. Dang, man. Hey, Barry. Yeah. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen a goat sucker? What? Goat sucker. Chupacabra. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen one of those? I haven't seen one personally, but I've heard about them. Yeah, me too. If anybody's got a goat sucking story, wait, if you got a goat sucker story, we want to hear it. If you got a Bigfoot story, we want to hear it. If you got a Loch Ness Monster story, or a Lake Champlain story, or Ogo Pogo story, or uh, an Oingo Boingo story, wait, that, that was an 80s band. Anyway, you got a weird cryptid story, we want to hear it. I didn't even know what a cryptid was, man. Yeah, dude, cryptids, they're like uh, the animals that haven't been necessarily proven by science. They're the ones on the edge. You know, they're not necessarily known animals, but they're known animals. We don't have the bodies or anything like that. So they're kind of like uh, half myth, half story based in reality, but still in that weird mystery area that we don't know about yet. Cryptids are fun. That's wild. That is wild. And you haven't told, and, I, and you haven't told that many people. The people that you have told, what do they think? Oh, that's cool. I, I would have liked to have seen that. Right. Um, <laughs> Shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, probably some of them think I'm crazy. That's why I don't tell too many people. Yeah. Um, I think there are a certain amount of people that believe in those kind of things. So, you know, so I, I've had to tell a few people. Yeah. I, I just, it's kind of something that you need to get off your chest. Right. And when I did, um, so my buddy Ed, who I don't contact too much anymore, I've kind of lost contact with him, but um, he lives in Southern California. And when I got out of the military, he said, hey, you know, you can move out here and I'll put you up till you um, get on your feet. And I that's where I wanted to go because I wanted to do the music thing. Yeah. And it was only then when I moved out there that we discussed this and described what we had seen and it was exactly the same. Wow. And so, I mean, I know that I wasn't imagining it because we both saw exactly the same thing. Right. Right. And I think that we were both in shock after that. And it was just too frightening to talk about. I was only, I was 19. Yeah. I'm 60 now. And, it was it was horrifying wow i mean that's something that it's it's, there's so many reasons that it's understandable that you wouldn't have shared this story you know it's something that is it's hard to comprehend what it was yeah you know hearing it from you i can't even imagine how trying to wrap your head around it having actually experienced it yourself and then you know like you said when you told people you know it's that's it's the kind of story where you know people were like you said think you're crazy or making it up or whatever but like well you know most ghostly encounters are different the ghostly encounters are apparitions that you see that usually fade into nothing or Mm. they don't come after you and they're this not, and, and they're not, they're not a mass. They're not, they're not of, su- of substance. You know, that's what's yeah, crazy. That's yeah. This was stalking us. This was stalking us with the intent to do bodily harm. That is my my. I'll never believe anything else. And you touched on something earlier that I've thought about over the years. Um, when you mentioned Jack the Ripper, and I was kind of thinking to myself, what if? What if it was something like this? Mm-hmm. That's why he was able to evade K-9 
capture for so long that it wasn't. What if Jack the Ripper was a non-human? Yeah. Or was was a not was an entity like this? But yeah. And maybe that's a long shot, but I've thought about that angle over the years, and this picture to me reminds me of that time period. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. That this thing likely was from that time period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't. I just. I. You know, I've I've had a few other experiences in my life, paranormal experiences, but never anything to that extent. That was, yeah, it was it was interesting. Well, I wonder if there's any other, and I'm sure because at the time, you know, you know, back then we didn't have the internet, but I wonder if there's anything around that town that now you could maybe look at and see if there are any other sightings of, of, of such a creature, mm-hmm. which if what you're saying is true, where people don't go up into that area because, you know, they probably know that there's some strange yeah. shit going on yeah. there. That might be the reason, you know, cause there's creatures that are lurking in those woods, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I mean, that makes sense to me too, because like if P, if you don't, if locals aren't going out, especially like young locals, you know, because if you grow up in a small town, what you do is, you know, you don't have house parties. You go out in the country. And if you had a cool <clears throat> castle or something like that yeah. to go out and party in, you know, that's what you would do. And I'm if afraid. they're not doing that, there's something going right. on. No, I think they know better. Mm-hmm. I think they know. Mm-hmm. I was over there for two and a half years, and like we would go, um, we went to Frankenstein. There's a city called Frankenstein. There's actually a castle there. We were on our way to a concert in Ramstein, and we stopped and went up in the castle and there, and uh, um, there was another castle closer to where I was stationed that we went all the way up in the, the like the tower and built a little fire up there, and... Um, I never saw the locals up in the mountains or up in these castles after dark ever, ever, not even once in two and a half years. And I think there, there's a good reason for that. I think, and and you know, you've kind of brought up something to where I think I do want to do some Google searches on sightings Mm -hmm. like this in Europe, Germany, locally, Mm -hmm. uh, disappearances, Mm-hmm. Um, cause I don't think the military, we heard those rumors about people disappearing and I really don't think the military would want to publicize that kind of like, um, David Polites and his missing 411, yep. like the national parks, they don't want to publicize. There's too much revenue involved yep. with tourism and they don't want to publicize right. these disappearances, Right. but there's something going on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I am going to follow up with this after this and do some kind of investigation. It would be cool um, to see. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. the thing about, and we've talked before on <clears throat> just as speaking in this country alone, the East Coast, the history that's over there, take that and multiply it by you know, a hundred. And when you go to Europe, it's just so steeped in history, and there's yeah. just there's a weight to to what's going on over there the, those those towns that are you know hundreds if not thousands of years old mm-hmm. lots of stuff has happened of course back way back in the day it was a much more barbaric type of a, a living you know situation Absolutely. you know so no telling what kind of especially in germany all the mm-hmm. upheaval the that's, forest, yeah like i mean there's no telling what's going on over there I saw graves when we were in, um, we went to the graveyard, a church, a chapel in Frankenstein, and there was um, graves from the 1300s, and like the gravestones were just worn, but you could still read some of the names, and there was ones with like skulls and crossbones on one side, and like angels on the other cherubs, Mm -hmm. and... It just um, there was places that we went where the the air and just the uh, the feeling yeah. uh, it was so heavy and oppressive yeah. and almost mm-hmm. that I could well believe that things there's things there that we can only imagine yeah yeah 
Yeah. I mean, I, I truly believe, like, I'm sure you've heard of the Beast of Gévaudan mm -hmm. in France. Um, there's a lot of history there of cryptids, shall, yeah. we, shall we say, right. cryptids and or vampires, werewolves. Um, even here in Kentucky, we have, and close by, we have our share of cryptids. Um, right. Now that I'm in this neck of the woods, I plan on doing, yeah. and I just need to give a quick shout out to Kyle Cadell. He runs the International Paranormal Museum here in Somerset. Okay. Um, good guy. He's doing investigations of his own. He was recently featured on the documentary Hell Year. Oh, okay, uh, okay, okay. They had him on for a brief second, and uh, uh, he's kind of living my dreams. So, you, so are you guys. I've always been interested in this stuff. And anybody that's like doing what you guys are doing that are actually following up on it, I have to give my hats off to you and kudos well, to you and keep keep it up. There's thanks, there's man. a lot of people stories to tell, and they're there, not all crazy. No, uh, you know we. <laughs> that's the thing is that they're not. And you know, are there people out there that make stories up? I'm sure that there are, but I'm sure. But we are honestly. We haven't come across those people yet. Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, people have these stories that they don't talk about because of what you said. They're, they, yeah. Why would you want to subject yourself to the criticism? The ridicule. Yeah. Criticism. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're and crazy. Yeah, you're nuts, you know, and it's like, but there's so many of these stories from very grounded people, sane mm -hmm. people. It can't be all bullshit. I mean, I, I just, no. I don't believe. <laughs> no, I agree with you. That's, uh, I just watched a documentary on the beast of Bray Road the other night. Mm. And these are earthy, like you said, grounded people yep. that have nothing to gain. They're not asking for monetary compensation. They have nothing to gain by telling their story. They just want people to know yeah. what they saw. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And right. I truly believe there are things out there. That we don't know of. No, yeah, for sure. No, and and that's yeah. and that's why we we've created this so that we can create a space for people to come tell their stories and feel like, you know, they belong to a community of people that share. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we may not all have the same story, but we got some crazy shit to tell. And yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, and and it's it's a, ultimately it's up to the listener to to decide what it is that they're going to be interested in. But we, we've got such a wide range of stories. And this one right here, I've never heard anything like this. No, no? nor have I. Never. Nor have I. And, like, even in a lot of my other, like, readings and documentaries and stuff, and, and like you said, the closest thing that I've ever heard about this, like this, would be associated with, you know, a traditional... Um, you know, European style vampire, you know, this that kind of a thing with the glowing eyes and the floating and, and just the darkness and everything. It, it, my gut hunch is that what it is, what it was. It was not a demon, it was not mm -hmm. a ghost, it was not human, but it once was. Yeah, um, Man. that's my take on it. And I only I shudder to think of what would have happened if I hadn't ran and I let it close that last 20 feet. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I would be here. Yeah, uh, and you're lucky. I, I really appreciate you guys letting me tell this story. It kind of, in a way, it's kind of therapeutic. Of course, um, and I appreciate it. And I just, like I said, kudos to you guys. Um, you know, I'm going to give you a shout out on Facebook. And what is the name of your podcast? It's What's, What's your, your weird story? Yep. What's your weird story? Yeah, we do the Y E R because we're folksy country boys. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the most honest ones. Yeah. Um, well, you know, and that's that's what that's that's also our history too. Is that you know we grew up in in uh, you know this southern sort of uh, western part of the world, small town, very you know uh, right wing religious, and we both had some strange stuff happen. That's me to a T, right wing, religious. Yeah. Um, and we had some weird, yeah, it's like, how do you explain it? You don't, you can't, but it is what it is, you know? 
Well, I, I like I said, I just believe there's uh, more things out there than we know of, mm-hmm. and the internet has brought the ability for people to share those stories that otherwise they would have not been able to share on any kind of scale. That's right. With people. Yeah. And what you're doing is, is even, you know, kind of expanding that base even more. Yeah. Um, I wish you guys luck. And, um, I am glad that I was able to share this with you. Wow. I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit speechless about it because like, it's, that's just so unique and so interesting. And so like, just, yeah, just incredible, and and you, you, you wouldn't have been as um, as happy about it if you were there, Adam. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. sure not. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a happy thing being there. It was right. terrifying. Well, what it so. does is it ex- expands your idea of what a ghostly or otherworldly encounter can be. Mm-hmm. I mean, because 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 we have this connotation of it has to fit into this category. But this this kind of shatters that notion, um, you know. Yeah, it was, and, and and like I said, I'm going to do my homework after this. There's things I need to look up because um, I seriously doubt that. I, I know this thing is out there. It's still out there. This kind of thing, it even 40 years later, is still there. I oh, guarantee sure. you. I'm sure. And I, I only wonder how many other people have encountered it but not walked away. Yeah. Well, right. if and if you find something out, you know, update us. Let us know, and we'll, we'll I absolutely we'll, will. you know we'll we'll update it on the on the show too. Hey, that's a nice T-shirt you got on there. Oh, thanks, dude. It's brand new. Do you like that? It's one of the official What's Your Weird Story T-shirts. Where'd you get that? It's funny that you ask. I just got it off the brand new Spreadshirt.com site for the What's Your Weird Story podcast. There's no www. You just go straight to shop.spreadshirt.com backslash what without the apostrophe W-H-A-T-S hyphen Y-E-O dash w e i r d dash s t o r y and that'll take you right there i mean you can never own enough clothing well that's true barry there's t-shirts for the ladies because you know they're cut differently there's hoodies which are really cool there's two different kinds of hoodies and there's also tote bags so you can tote your stuff that's so cool man so if you guys go out to spreadshirt.com what's your weird story currently there are two designs but there will be more going up very soon so just keep your eyes out for that and if you decide to get one of our shirts tag yourself on instagram to ours or facebook show your love show us what you got let's see your true colors um when i lived in california i had a a friend that was also well he was an aspiring heavy metal vocalist kind of always kind of looked up to me and uh we had a cat we were living in an apartment and the cat liked to sleep in the bathtub she was Mm -hmm. pregnant she liked the cold porcelain i think kind of she liked to sleep in the bathtub, and that's where her litter box was in the bathroom and her food. And so he came over one day and was telling us how he had just been to a like a seance, a Ouija board kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And ever since that, a few days earlier, he felt like something was following him. And I kind of started getting cold chills when he told me about that. Mm-hmm. And almost no sooner had he said that than I start hearing from the bathroom what sounded like. This is what it sounded like to me. Something, it was paws, claws scrambling on porcelain, but not moving. Mm-hmm. So I run into the bathroom. The cat is standing at the, the door staring at the shower, staring at the bathtub, and not moving with her, like the fur up on her back, Halloween cat. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of blood by the drain and fur on both sides of the bathtub. And here's what I pictured was something kind of coming up behind her, grabbing her like this, holding her in place while she's trying to get away. And she was so freaked out that a little bit of blood came out of her she was pregnant Mm -hmm. and that cat after that would not go she had been using 
that litter box and eating in that bathroom, uh, her food and sleeping in that tub for probably six months, she would not go back in that bathroom. Wow. So he brought something. There was something following him. And I just told him, look, dude, you need, you don't play with the Ouija boards. Uh, they're not toys. Don't go back to that house. And well, I sat down and prayed with him. And I, after that, we did like a, uh, um, I got some, some of these Jesus candles that you found and we prayed around the house and we smudged, got some smudge sticks and we cleared it out. I never had any issues after that, but he brought something into the house Damn. that oh, day. At, um, it was gone after that, but I, I, he brought something in that day and it was, it was, uh, he was like, I can't believe you just ran in there like that. What if there was a monster in there or something? <laughs> it's like, dude, this is my house. It's my job to go in there and check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but wow. like I said, the cat, we lived there another six months, and we had to move the litter box and the food box. It would not enter the bathroom again. And I would see that cat sometimes just staring into the bathroom, looking. I, I think they can see things we can't. Yeah. And it would stare into the bathroom, but that was that was – my only other real paranormal experience, it was freaky. Golly. Yeah, well, that's pretty intense, too, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was pretty weird. So, again, well, I hope I've given you guys a little bit of oh, it's something. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And you just, re- you, just re- you just reaffirmed the fact that I'll never pick up a Ouija board. <laughs> yeah, <for real. laughs> you know, the scary thing about those is they market them as toys for kids. Yeah. I know, man. But I really think when you're... You know, you're you're answering, giving questions and getting answers supposedly from spirits. There are spirits that are looking to gain access to you. Yeah. And they're not always going to be friendly spirits. There's demonic forces out there that want to gain access to you. And they use those Ouija boards, I believe, yeah. to gain access. So yeah. I don't play with them. They're not yeah. to be played with. Agreed. Yeah. There's Agreed. usually... There's two stories that you hear about people's experiences with Ouija boards. Uh, the first being that, oh, we played with it, but nothing really happened. And then second is, freaky shit happened, and it was evil, and we know it. <laughs> so, so well, like what got me was he told me that during the seance, during this Ouija board session, what freaked him out, the reason he left, and was that there was crosses on the wall and stuff started jumping off the wall. So when he told me that and he told me something was following him, I knew right away that, and I, I, that thing in the bathroom, I knew that it wasn't a good situation. Yeah. And it was real. Yeah. So that was my, except for seeing a, a UFO in Germany, that was my only other paranormal experience. And, um, yeah, that was pretty weird. Tell us that. But, what, tell us that. Yeah. One what can you, got... you tell us about it? Cause we've, We've not had um, any kind of like supernatural kind of experiences, but we both independent independently of each other seen UFOs and stuff in the sky. I mean, you grew up out in the country, basically. You can see that all. You know, you'll see something almost. <laughs> it's, this it's was like, pretty close. This but, was, uh, uh, but there's kind of some mitigating factors. So, you know, when we were in Germany, I drank a lot of dark beer. Oh yeah, of that dark. Beer. Your low and brow Doppelbach, oh, and I'm yes. going to be honest with you. We may have ingested some <laughs> mind altering substances. Right. Uh, there wasn't or, much. Or mind opening substances. Okay, I, I like that take on it. <laughs> okay. So, okay. me, three of my buddies were kicking out behind the bar- barracks, drinking some beer, and doing other things. And, you know, we're kind of laying on our backs, just looking up at the sky. And I'd say about 100 feet above us, this craft just goes over very slowly. Imagine it was just rectangular with a triangle on each end. There was lights, no sound, and it just drifted above us. And we didn't, didn't even really trip on it. We were all so wasted that it was just like, wow, did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. And it, But it was, I mean, it, it was... Just something I kind of logged in my memory. Um, Did it make sound? I've heard of brain cells over the years, but I'm I since you know like 2001, 2003, I've nothing. 
very clean living. Um, I, I have no vices except a little Grand Marnier here and there. Good, good. And, and wine and a little, you know, a little dark beer. But good. Um, we, I, yeah, that was pretty interesting. That was not a. Um, it was not our of our technological capabilities. It, it flew too low. It was totally silent. Okay. There was no wings, no visible means of propulsion, um, and I don't think it was earthly technology yeah let's put it that way wow um i have never seen a ufo again i've seen you know when i lived in utah we'd go out and watch like during the meteor showers i'd see white lights going across the sky but my ex-wife would say those are just satellites yeah and i accepted that explanation um but those satellites three experiences those are great all of those are great yeah thanks great yeah, um, yeah. The very first time I saw a UFO that I got really, really excited about was one of those white dots that just went arc, just you know, at a steady pace straight across the sky. And I got very excited, and I was pointing at it, and I was telling um, my friends, I was like, "Look at that! Look at that!" And then one of my friends' dad, who happened to be with us, said, "He said, yeah, no, that's a that's a satellite." I was like, really? He's like, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, he grew up in the with the, in the space race era, so you wow. know, he saw he saw Sputnik and he saw those and he knew that was a satellite and stuff. Here's what I find interesting is the uh, the Navy. I think our government has known of and interacted with not only UFOs but extraterrestrials for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, they've released some videos recently. Yeah. Um, uh, what they call the fast walker and that were actual Navy vi- videos taken by um, our aircraft. Mm-hmm. And I just watched a documentary on the 2004 Nimitz encounters um, off the coast of California. That's worth watching. If you haven't seen it, okay. They will not through the freedom of information act. They made the more recent ones available, but the 2004 Nimitz encounter for some reason they don't want to release the videos on that. Mm-hmm. I think it's more graphic, right. more more damning. Mm-hmm. That it would it would it would be more uh, cut and dry. That yes, our military, our government knows of these, and they're scared to release the the actual evidence because of the implications that hey, we they can't protect us. Yeah. Their technology right. is so far advanced that they can't protect us. Well that's why I was I was shocked that they, I, I was shocked that they released the videos that they have. Because they're, they're I Yeah, I mean they're admitting that they don't have any fucking idea what's going on. They just know that no, there's these yeah. So I thought I mean in this video there was one instance where this thing dropped from twenty six thousand feet to 50 feet above sea level in 0.7 seconds. That's insane. 20,000 feet in less than a second, and then submerged and was going 50 knots underwater. Underwater, wow. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's... Wow. There's things out there we don't know about, and I only hope that, as far as UFO goes, UFOs go, that one of these days our government comes clean and share with us the knowledge because if that if there if it's true that and i sure surely believe it is Mm -hmm. that is one of the greatest things the stories everybody needs to know it's 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 the biggest story of our time it's the biggest story of all time of all time you know what i mean i mean take jesus out of it and all that 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 would be earth shattering to yeah it would absolutely destroy religion i mean it would change people's ideas of where we are at, where we're from, the human story, the history. I, I, that's why I think I'm so fascinated by it. You know, well, you know, even biblically, Jesus said, "I have other flocks." Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you're right. I think that the their government is scared. Look what happened when Orson Welles aired uh, War of the Worlds. Right. Yeah. There, well, and I, I, you know, at that time they were not as technologically aware, but people were committing suicide. Yeah, yeah. Um, thinking That's that they were invaded. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think now I think they're kind of grooming us to accept 
the yeah. fact that aliens exist. And that's okay. So, and that was my point. Why now? Why are they letting us know now? You know what I mean? Because there's so much video evidence. Right. Mm -hmm. So many people are becoming aware with the smartphones. They can't keep it under wraps for much longer. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that's so interesting, man. It's wild. I, 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 I appreciate you guys. And, of course. Uh, like I said, if I can ever do anything, let me know. Thank well, you. Spread the word. Tell people right. about us. And uh, tell people that also, you know, who have had it unusual weird experience of any kind we let weird cover a lot of ground on the show um we like it like that so you know and your stories definitely fall right in there <laughs> perfect robert yeah, yeah. thank you robert, so much we really for appreciate on. you coming no on yeah it was my pleasure yeah man fantastic story yeah it's just great <laughs> any anytime you want to come back on you're you're more than welcome man And the girl, the babysitter girl, she picked up the phone and there was a policeman on the other side. And he said, we've tracked the phone call and it's coming from inside the house. Whoa. Yeah, dude. I love those urban legend stories. Dude, I do too. And you remember the one where the girl, it's always the babysitter or it's the kids making out in Lover's Lane. But there's the one with the girl comes up and she finds the kids are watching TV and she turns them around and their face has SpaghettiOs. Oh, man. Or the hook guy. Remember the oh, hook the guy? Hook. The hook was hanging from the rear view yeah. mirror. Yeah. Yeah. So if you got a story that is similar to any of those awesome urban legends, we want to hear it. Because, you know, those urban legends, man, they started off as somebody's true life weird story. It's got to be true somewhere. Well, that was the first vampire story we've had. Yeah, dude, that was bad ass. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was it's, great. It sets up such a such a picturesque image, you yeah. know, yeah. In, in it runs like a, 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 a movie, you know, in yeah. my mind, for sure. And it was just like, man, it's so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. Everything about it is just so cool. Absolutely. Germany in the in the wintertime, in, in the, the woods. In the late 70s, dude. You know, I mean, that is enough. Germany yeah. is such a cool country. It has, obviously, the culture itself is quite unique, even even by European standards. But, like, the architecture and just just the, 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 the depth of, you know, what the country's been through is just, it's, it's an incredible place for a story to take place. And his other story, well, he saw the UFO there as well, right, you know, right? Um, which may have been aided or uh, his third eye may have been opened. Yes. By Chem other chemically, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> but still, he's, he's seen it. It was there. Well, and that's cool, man. I think, you know, I've been pretty wasted at times. And um, <laughs> but I think if I saw something like that, I'm pretty sure I don't know that uh, I would be able to equate that to being overly intoxicated. But hey, yeah. it the possibility i guess is there i would think it would be a sobering moment for absolutely, sure absolutely so. for sure and then of course the story of when he was out and he was out in la doing the band thing which by the way we're going to talk about in just a second yeah but him being out in la doing the band thing and, and his uh you know his buddy bringing something over after messing around with a ouija board yeah cat man. cat went nuts yeah and that poor cat i feel bad for the cat but man yeah it's crazy. Yeah. Well, especially back in, in those days, uh, people were playing around with stuff mm -hmm. quite a bit, you know, especially in that scene. He was in a metal band called Dark Age. Yeah. And uh, my God, man, they're so good. I I got the feeling I hadn't listened to them before we mm -hmm. spoke to him. But I got the feeling while we were talking to him. I'm like, I bet his band is badass, man. Yeah, dude. And yeah. The, and the, Same thing. Yeah. It's, it's great, man. It's uh. Yeah. If you're a metal guy and you're like, you know, you're into Judas Priest and, you yeah. know, the, that, that new wave of British heavy metal, yeah. uh, that era of bands, you're going to love his stuff. But yeah, I mean, great guy, great storyteller. And just, uh, just, I mean, we're so lucky to have, you know, folks like this that come on to the, to the podcast. 
Yeah, man. And Robert was gracious enough to let us uh, use one of his uh, tracks for you guys to check out and listen to from Dark Ages. Their EP came out in 1984, and it is just everything you want in a that early 80s era, pre-glam. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little thrashy. Metal. Yeah. A little thrashy, really, but definitely really great. You know, great I mean, vocals. Great yeah, vocals, man. Really, which are him. That's him yeah, on the vocals. And, and, um, you know, I mean, look, if you, if the album has fantasy art yeah. on the cover, Oh, it's, it's you can pretty yeah. much guarantee that it's good. It's a Homer. And man, yeah, these were, these were is awesome. And so, and, we appreciate Robert sharing that with us as well. So stick around after we finish babbling to listen to this track, uh, Viper, which is uh, the one Robert suggested. And it is kick ass. Yeah. Yeah. It's great stuff. Turn it up loud. Cool. All right. Well, hey, everybody. Um, thanks for listening. Thanks again, Robert, ever so much for those awesome stories. And stick around for his for his jams. We will see you next week. We will be same time, same place. We have got for you the return at long last. Our good friend, our special correspondent, our resident Bigfoot expert and voice of the listener, Mr. Jeff Hubbard. All right. Yeah. Finally wrangled him in and we have our right in special number two. That's and awesome. we have got a good bunch of stories that people have shared from the right end stuff all from all over the world yeah it's great so yeah it's thanks. good stuff so yeah. tune in for that for and sure. keep them coming keep them coming yes yes indeed because he loves being on and he loves reading your stories well all right guys until then be safe be weird <laughs>
as always, if you have a weird story, we want to hear it. If you have a lot of them, we want to hear them all. We can't do this podcast without your invaluable contributions. Whether it's sharing your stories, listening, rating, and spreading spreading the the word word about the podcast. podcast. Thanks for listening. Till next time, be safe, be weird. The stories presented on the What's Your Weird Story podcast are, to our knowledge, true experiences that our guests have had. We can't take the